So let's begin with our conversation tonight. Now, this concerns the territorial integrity of our nation, Nigeria, and you know how important that is to any nation. So there's a boundary dispute that is brewing again, yes, between Nigeria and Cameroon. That's neighboring Cameroon. And of course, this is not the first time. In fact, it looks like this is becoming a recurring issue. A lot of people remember in 2008, uh, the Bakasi situation and uh, the fallout of it, how there's still some sort of discontent with that area. But that wasn't Cross River. What we're dealing with this time around is around Adamawa State. And just recently, the House of Representatives at her committee investigating the boundary dispute had to essentially put a temporary stop to that process. What exactly is going on with all of that? We're joined uh, by the woman who chairs the House at her committee investigating the boundary dispute, Honorable Benny La. She joins us right here in our Abuja studio. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much today. for having me. Thank you. Ah, just before we get into this, I mean, the elephant in the room, it, it looks like a wave of tribunal judgment affected the PDP lawmakers. I think Plateau State has gotten the biggest harvest, if I can use that <laughs> expression. I mean, it's good to see you laughing about that, but how are you receiving that judgment, really? Well, um, as you well know, the ground on which the tribunal quashed our elections and our victory, overwhelming victory, um, is on the grounds that uh, we had no party structure and that uh, as at the time um, we contested our primaries, PDP had no structure, therefore we, could, we, we were not legible to contest. Now, the tribunal, obviously, the judges erred because we did have a structure. In February of this year, um, the same matter following our primaries, was brought before the courts, uh, a tribunal, federal high court, and a court of appeal. And all those three courts ruled that PDP had a valid structure and nothing stopped PDP from contesting elections and threw out the suit. And so um, it's also interesting that um, it was the other parties, the APC and the LP, that got this judgment against the PDP on matters having to do with its own internal affairs. Um, this is really unfortunate because the laws are very clear. Everybody knows what the Electoral Act says, that uh, the issues of sponsorship and nomination, as was recently ruled in the APM, in the case of APM and Shetima, that those are pre-election matters. And also on the issue of, um, you know, the internal affairs of a party. Um, what business does another party have to do with another party? And today, I'm sorry to say, my very good friend, Ali Malou, had his election quashed. Um, you know, so these are some of the things where tribunals give conflicting judgment. And in the same state that on the second panel upheld the rule of law mm. and they said that PDP, um, the candidates were valid and they threw out and dismissed the, um, the suit. Yeah. So it, it's funny. <laughs> it's quite interesting. Yeah. You've been in the House of Representatives since 2007. Mm -hmm. That's remarkable on, on different grounds. With this judgment, incidentally, it came on the same day that you were halting uh, that demarcation process, which we'll get into. So what does that make you now with that judgment? Have you begun an appeal process? Does that make you uh, no more an honorable? So does that mean you can't sit uh, on that committee, essentially perform those functions? How? What kind of interpretation are you getting from your lawyers on this one? Well, definitely, as we all know, um, the appeal court is the final court of ruling, and then the appeal process um, will definitely play a, a role, I believe, in dispensing justice. There's a time frame for that, and we're, all of us, 15 of us probably, by the time they've ended this judgment, will be about 15 of us will all go and appeal. And I'm sure the appeal court will do the right thing, because the appeal court has reversed um, those decisions. And it was the same appeal court sitting in Joss that ruled the same division uh, in February of this year um, that those issues uh, are pre-election matters and have nothing to do with post-election. So I believe that it's nothing to worry about, but we all have the right to continue with our full responsibilities until the appeal court um, take, makes its final decision. So essentially you continue with your work in the of national course, every, every member. A lot of us, you know, are, go, are going on appeal because a lot of members, even across the country, not a lot, but a few members, have issues with tribunals and senators as well. Interesting. <clears throat> so, uh, still on this, really, because I, I want to know 
what your thought process is? Because I imagine hearing that judgment, you've had to look at it, look at the situation. Do you have a feeling about what is at play here? Do you have any funny feeling? Because we've seen the tribunal. I was speaking to a candidate of your party yesterday, uh, whom the judgment from the tribunal actually favored. So is it that when the judgment does not favor you, it is not a good judgment, the court erred, but when it favors you, it's a good judgment. Um, actually, it's not about whether, who it favors. It's about upholding the rule of law. And the law is very clear, uh, regardless of who benefits from the law. And that's why you heard me quote the issue of APM and Shetima. Shetima, who's not in my party, the vice president, um, His Excellency, he benefited from that. Um, but that was, that was the law. So it, regardless of who benefits from it, I think Nigerians should learn to, and judges should always make decisions in consonance with the law. Um, because when you make decisions outside of the law, um, obviously, you know, your rulings obviously have political undertones, then that makes, that makes it, uh, you know, diluted. And uh, it, it, it's, it's very clear that uh, it wasn't the law that was taken into consideration, but other matters. Well, quite interesting times we're in. But let's get into mm -hmm. um, the other issue. This concerns the nation, Nigeria, as it is. And for a lot of people who are hearing this and wondering, what is going on again? I thought we were done with this one. Now we can face our issues in the country. Can you just walk us through this whole National Boundary Commission asking them to put, an, uh, to put a hold to the demarcation? What is going on really, Honorable? Well, um, first of all, actually before now, um, the Boundary Commission had actually even had to put a hold on, on its demarcation exercises in many of these communities. Um, following the ICJ Treaty, um, of course, I'm sure you are aware the the ICJ ruling. Yeah. Beg your pardon. Um, I'm sure you are aware that's the that, International Court of Justice. Yes, the International Court of Justice. Yeah. Um, Cameroon came before Nigeria. Um, that parts of Bakasi, parts of uh, you know Lake Chad up to Borno, um, Cross River States, you know the peninsula of Bakasi, yeah. um, and some of our other boundaries claimed that it was their land. Um, you know, the issue of territorial boundaries falls within the ICJ, I mean, between the convention that we signed, the OAU, the Organization of the African Unity, all the nations in Africa have, seed, have signed and also their part, they, all of them have signed treaties both with the um, International Court of Justice yeah. at The Hague agreeing that whatever interpretation is given to the treaties signed by the Anglo-German, Anglo-French, and whatever colonial boundaries we inherited uh, would be um, recognized in both nations. Unfortunately, when these boundaries were, were created by colonial masters, they didn't consider our sociological, historical, cultural, and traditional differences and beliefs. Um, they just randomly sat somewhere in Germany and France, uh, you know, England, and drafted these agreements between the colonial masters. And that has continued over the years to cause serious problems and sources of disputes for the border communities. That is where the problem lies. However, um, the Organization of African Unity in Cairo, um, there was a declaration, um, 1964, 1986, um, the African nations agreed to abide by those colonial um, boundaries, regardless of the fact that they were not perfect. Mm. Now, in doing so, um, the boundaries, um, there's different interpretations of where the boundary lines lie. Um, because the National Boundary Commission, which is the organization of government in Nigeria, the federal government, because issues of boundary in the constitution uh, you know, the powers of defining boundaries lie within the federal government, not the state or the local governments. And the federal government has an agency, the National Boundary Commission, um, who is responsible for the terms of references to demarcate and delineate our borders and boundaries and to maintain good neighborliness and friendliness with our other nations. Now, in the issue of Nigeria and Cameroon, um, in order to implement the ICJ ruling after it was passed in favor of Cameroon, 33 vi villages were ceded uh, to in the Lake Chad territory. Right. That was, as you know, both countries agreed to that. Um, 
President Obasanjo then and uh, Paul Bia, President Paul Bia of Cameroon, had agreed to, to, to that, and the same in the Bakasi Peninsula. Now, according to the National Boundary Commission, there's some areas uh, and communities that have not um, been properly demarcated, and according to them, those communities belong in Cameroon. Now, those communities are disputing that they do not belong in Cameroon because of their historical um, boundaries and ties, and because they've been there for over 400 years. Uh, so how can you live in a place for 400 years and you wake up one day and you're told you're in Cameroon? So that there is the cause of the problem. And also defining the boundary lines um, in the cost of the boundary lines has not been acceptable to some communities, especially Michika local government um, of Adamawa State, um, the Sina Wati and yeah. Sina Wali so, area. So, so let, let, let's get this right. The ICJ gave a judgment does it favor the communities being a part of Nigeria or Cameroon? It depends on the side where the community is falling. In the case of Adamawa State, um, part of those communities fall in Cameroon and part fall in according to um, the interpretation of the National Boundary Commission. And that's why Nigeria and Cameroon have um, a joint commission. Um, however, the communities um, vehemently resist that they have and they've never been, and that that wasn't the interpretation um, of the ICJ ruling. They agreed to part of it because already, even in those areas uh, where there's been disputes, um, there are many villages and pillars that have been laid. About 46 pillars already have been laid without any disputes. But I think there are about four or five more pillars um, that have serious disputes. And we must consider the rights of Nigerians because the um, treaty also says to respect the rights of indigents and uh, of the indigents living in those areas. And the treaty says, you know, the, um, that in the, when, um, when it comes to demarcation exercise, um, negotiations between countries could also, you know, uh, work. And um, so there's, there's a lot that hasn't been explored. And I think because of what's going on right now, it would be very difficult for the National Boundary Commission to go back and say they want to carry out any demarcation without resolving the lingering issues on clearly uh, both the federal government and the citizens living in those areas agreeing to whether they remain in Cameroon or Nigeria. But for the most part, Nigerians, I mean, you can see that they're Nigerians. So there's a question naturally in the minds of people. Is Nigeria about to lose land to Cameroon? Are we about to cede land that rightfully belongs to us? And they can talk about uh, the implications of that, perhaps natural resources. I mean, not talking about the people themselves who feel that wait a minute, we're Nigerians, we want to stay in Nigeria. But then the secondary, uh, you know, considerations like resources and all of that. So how are you approaching this? You've halted the process, I imagine, yes. or you've asked that the process be halted, but you say the Boundary Commission had already halted the, pro the, the process. Mm -hmm. So what is the way forward? What are you trying to achieve? Yes, uh, um, thank you very much for that question. Um, I cannot answer that question now because we're on a fact-finding investigation. Um, I cannot, re you know, we've not reached, we've not made our conclusions, but um, I cannot categorically say whether we're seeding or we're not seeding. Um, because the National Boundary Commission says those territories already lie within Cameroon. And the communities say no, especially in the area of Boki local government. And when you trace pillar 113A, uh, because the retracing of that pillar will determine the location of Dana and Biaje, uh, from what we see, it's very clear that that should be, you know, the, that territory should be Nigerian territory. Uh, so it's, it's still in dispute. We're going to involve more, we're going to need more legal experts, um, um, surveyor generals from neutral parties. We've heard from government. There's still a lot more investigation to do to arrive at a final conclusion. So <clears throat> what is the situation of the people in the meantime? And I'd like to also know what you're getting from the government of Cameroon, because I imagine that they're also making moves, right? Understandably yes. so. So uh, first of all, what is the state, what is the fate of the people right now? How long do you expect this to last for? And will they be in limbo during that process? And what exactly are you hearing from Cameroon? Well, first of all, um, Nigeria and Cameroon have a joint technical, they have a, a, a joint technical team uh, and they have a commission. Um, the Nigerian Cameroon Mixed Boundary Commission, they have that. So they are working 
on further negotiations and further um, dialogues. Right now, um, the focus of the federal government is to engage the communities and the stakeholders. Uh, however, I must say that the Mboya man and the approach has not been done e uh, effectively. The stakeholders claim uh, that, for instance, in Adamawa State, um, the National Boundary Commission had told them they were coming on a visit and they saw Cameroonian gendarmes coming and then they immediately reacted and that's why in some cases violence would break out. And so that has put the youth there permanently on alert. Um, some of these areas are, 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 are very fragile right now. Um, there needs to be more of um, our security presence there. Um, I think that this is a very delicate issue. Um, the government has, um, the, through the National Boundary Commission, has put in place a structure with the Adamawa state communities and the, government, and the state government to meet and the um, affected communities. However, uh, during the hearing, we learned that they only met uh, in June and they've not met since June. And that last meeting did not go too well. So um, I think we, this, this is still a fact-finding. We're still hearing and revealing uh, more revelations are coming, and then we'll know what to do after that. Well, it appears as though Cameroon has already taken charge. If you, if you see security operatives from Cameroon, the gendarmes, in that region, is that an encroachment, or what exactly is it? Well, actually, uh, according to what the National Boundary Commission said, they said that if they believe that the territory they're going to is in Cameroon, under their agreement, the Cameroonian gendarmes are to be there. If they believe it's in Nigeria, then they will call the Nigerian um, military. So you see, there's a discrepancy. Because where Nigerians believe is Nigeria, the National Boundary Commission is saying, no, that's not Nigerian territory. And like I said, people have lived in um, places for 400 years, and then you wake up one day and you tell them. Uh, so this may require... a a, a very good diplomatic um, solution. So the options escalate this to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, escalate it to the President. Is, is that on the table as well? Is the President aware of this? Well, that right now we haven't finished our findings, but we intend to uh, alert at the appropriate time. The, Nas the National Assembly will definitely get its report across to them and we're done. Uh, about security presence, I think it's really important yes. uh, for those areas. Yes. Uh, yes. What kind of partnership agreement or what do you think the people need from the Nigerian security agencies, and I'm talking perhaps uh, customs, immigration, police, military, what is present there right now and what do they need? Yes, well, we visited uh, Boki, local government in Cross River State, and honestly, we saw very little military presence. But we must thank the Nigerian Navy uh, because they were able to provide the logistics. It's a very tough terrain. It's forest. Uh, the weather there is not, uh, it's not easy even to fly. In fact, we had to... Um, we couldn't fly in the day we wanted we, because of bad weather, con you know, constantly there's bad weather there. But um, the, the, the presence of the military there is, is very minimal. Um, and that's why the Cameroonians also have taken advantage. But in the issue of the Cross River State, the Cameroonians are not even close by. They're way away. They're not even close to Nigerian territory in Cross River State and uh, Cameroon border. But the National Boundary Commission is saying they want to, they have a time limit to demarcate this territory and by next year they're supposed to report to the United Nations technical, joint technical team that this has been concluded. Now they are not able to conclude their demarcation exercises because of course there's a disagreement between the federal government and the community. So those disagreements is what we need to resolve right now. I think the important thing in this is we need to know how far uh, the federal government can go because really the issues of boundaries are, are, are laid by um, treaties and all that but the interpretation of the treaty is what is in question here right here and <clears throat> it's, it's quite uh you know sad that this is as a result of what happened decades ago and yes. nigerians were not even a part of it. they were not exactly. parties to this and then you have to feel the brunt of it on a final note what will nigeria be losing if some of those lands were eventually ceded uh, against the wishes of the people, what would we be losing as a It would be a huge loss. Um, there's in, in, um, in Cross River State, Boki local government, there's a lot of um, biodiversity. Um, some of the world's best forest um, biodiversity, wildlife um, forest in the world, I think, the timber value and all of that is in that area. It's rich, 
very rich in uh, natural resources and we believe there's more um, however, we don't believe that there's oil wells there, but it's, it's just the rich nature of the territory. And the one in Adamawa State? And the one in Adamawa State will be losing the mountains, the, you know, the lovely mountains and the people. Um, which is most important. Which is the most important thing, yes. Exactly. Well, we should the very best. What's the timeline for this? Um, our timeline actually is to report back in... We've extended it. The speaker has graciously extended it for us. So we have another... Two months or so. Two months? Yes. So in two months we should get something definite. Hopefully. And hopefully it's good news. Yes. Yeah. We'd like to thank you so much, <laughs> uh, Honorable uh, Benny La, who's thank chairing you. that House Ad Hoc Committee investigating uh, that boundary dispute. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.